In June 1982, Ronald Reagan hosted Steven Spielberg at the White House for a private screening of the movie E.T. In the audience was Ronald Reagan, several astronauts like Neil Armstrong, and about 30 other staff members. After the movie, Reagan stood up, walked to the front of the room, and what happened next shocked Spielberg. He looked around the room, almost like he was doing a head count, and then he said, I want to thank you for bringing E.T. to the White House. We really enjoyed your movie. And then he said, and there are a number of people in this room who know that everything on that screen is absolutely true. And everybody laughed by the way, but he wasn't smiling as he said it. It's easy to dismiss this comment as a joke until you realize that Ronald Reagan was a firm believer in UFOs and aliens. You see, in 1974, seven years prior to getting elected, President Reagan had a UFO sighting of his own that would alter him forever. He was on a small Cessna aircraft flying to a fundraiser when 35,000 feet in the air, they saw a mysterious orb that was flying next to their plane and nobody had an explanation for it. Reagan was quoted a week later by a reporter from the Wall Street Journal saying, I looked out the window and saw this bright white light zigzagging around. I went up to the pilot and said, have you seen anything like that before? He was shocked and said, nope. I told him to follow it and we followed it for several minutes. Then all of a sudden to our utter amazement, it went straight up into the heavens. Skeptical, the reporter asked him, are you telling me that you saw a UFO? At this moment, Reagan got a serious look on his face and said, let's just say that I'm agnostic. This sighting was also confirmed by the actual pilot of the aircraft, Colonel Bill Painter from the Air Force, who said, we were near Bakersfield when Governor Reagan called my attention to a big light flying a bit behind the plane. It appeared to be several hundred yards away. It was a fairly steady light until it began to accelerate, then it appeared to elongate. I didn't know what it was because the UFO went from a normal cruise speed to a fantastic speed instantly. We never filed a report because for a long time they considered you a nut if you saw a UFO. And despite the stigma around UFOs at the time, Reagan was still elected president seven years later. Which brings up the question, if he was such a firm believer in UFOs, then why wouldn't he say anything to the public? To answer that question, we've got to look at who the vice president was under Ronald Reagan, and that was George H.W. Bush, who before becoming vice president was director of the CIA. And this is an interesting connection because the CIA is rumored to have been working directly with the Majestic 12, a secret group of government officials tasked with maintaining the UFO cover-up. Which means if anybody knew the truth about UFOs, it was this guy right here. Here's where the Reagan story starts to get crazy. A top secret document was leaked in 2005 by a retired DIA agent in order to quote, facilitate the gradual release of confidential documents pertaining to a top secret exchange program of 12 US military personnel to Serpo, a planet of Zeta Reticuli between 1965 to 1978. And it contained the full transcript of the actual meeting where President Reagan was briefed on the entire topic of UFOs and extraterrestrials. And they even called this issue above top secret. They also discussed details like recovered UFO crashes dating back to 1947, how one of these crashes had a survivor and they called him Eben, which stands for extraterrestrial biological entity. The Ebens are from a binary star system, which is about 40 light years away from Earth. And they're one of just five known ET races that have been visiting Earth for quite some time. And honestly, I'm just scratching the surface of everything they talked about in this meeting. But what's important to note is that after this meeting, President Reagan completely changed his tone on UFOs. He went from openly talking about how he believed in them to not really saying much about them ever again, while ramping up all the military operations, just in case relations with the ETs started to go south. And that's when Reagan decided that he wanted to create something called the Star Wars Defense Initiative, which is a military program that would give us the ability to shoot down nuclear missiles from space in case the Soviets happen to send one our way. What's funny about that is in 1985, President Reagan met with Mikhail Gorbachev, who's the former president of the Soviet Union, where Gorbachev said that Reagan privately asked him, what would you do if the United States were attacked by someone from outer space? Would you help us? I said, no doubt about it. He said, we too. And that conversation lines up perfectly with a speech that Reagan later gave at the UN saying, I occasionally think how quickly our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat from outside this world. And yet, I ask you, is not an alien force already among us? But just because President Reagan was briefed on UFOs doesn't mean all presidents get the same treatment. In fact, most aren't told anything at all because to career politicians, the president is just a temporary hire who will have that position for eight years tops. Take Jimmy Carter, for example. He was president right before Ronald Reagan. And like Reagan, Carter also had a wild UFO sighting of his own in 1969. What's crazy is he actually filed an official UFO sighting report with NICAP, the National Investigation 
Investigations Committee on Aerial Phenomenon. He even made a public statement saying this after filing that report. I'll never make fun of people who say they've seen unidentified flying objects in the sky. I'm convinced that UFOs exist because I've seen one. Years later, he even recalled this UFO sighting on Larry King Live. Tell me about the time you once saw a UFO. I was outside a school lunchroom one night and I and about 25 men were standing around and all of a sudden in the western sky we saw a strange light coming towards us, a round light. It got closer and closer and right above the pine trees it stopped and then it began to change colors from blue to red to white and then it just disappeared into the west. So it was a genuine UFO in that it was an unidentified flying object. And because of the sighting, while he was running for president, he even ran on the stance that if elected, he would make every piece of information this country had on UFOs available to the public and the scientists. And to uphold that promise, right after he won the election, he went straight to George Bush Sr., who was still the director of the CIA at the time, and asked him to hand over any and all information that we had on UFOs and extraterrestrial intelligence. That's when George Bush said this to President Carter. That information exists on a need-to-know basis only, and simple curiosity from the president is inadequate. Bush then tried to garner a deal with Carter by saying that he'd consider handing over the CIA's UFO information if he promised to keep him on as the director of the CIA while he was in office. And without a second thought, President Carter turned Bush's deal down and fired him on the spot. That's when Marsha Smith, who's a senior space analyst under President Carter, approached Daniel Sheehan, who's an attorney for the Jesuit National Headquarters in Washington, D.C., and asked for his help with gathering intelligence for whether or not aliens existed in our galaxy. And Sheehan agreed to help on one condition. I told her that I would need to have access to certain kinds of information. And she said, what would you like to see? And I said, well, the first thing I'd like to see is the classified section of Project Blue Book. Now, officially, Project Blue Book didn't have any classified sections, but nonetheless, Marsha Smith said, I can't promise anything. Let me go talk to my higher ups and see what they say. Much to our surprise, I was granted permission to see them. So a few days later, he was led to a basement vault under the Library of Congress, where armed guards were standing in front of a certain room. The two security men at the door told me I was not allowed to take any notes, but I actually had a yellow pad under my arm when I went in like this. Which none of the guards happened to notice as he walked into the room alone. I was brought downstairs into a room where they had these shoe boxes with microfilm in them, documents, etc. As he was riffling through everything, he eventually found a series of, quote, unmistakable photographs. It wasn't a light in the sky. It wasn't a vague report about having seen something going very fast. These were official United States Air Force photographs. That showed a clear flying saucer embedded in snow and surrounded by Air Force personnel. It plowed across the field and was stuck into a snowbank, about a 45 degree angle. He also noticed there were photos of some symbols that were apparently on the side of this flying saucer. When I saw these photographs, I opened up the yellow pad and I traced the actual symbols that were along the base of the saucer. And after he finished, he stood up, closed his pad, and walked out of the room. And the two security guys, one of them says, what's that under your arm? And I said, oh, this is a yellow pad. And he opened it up and he leaped through all the pages and there was nothing there. And Sheehan said the reason he didn't see anything because I put it on the inside of the cardboard. Which luckily the guard didn't even bother to look at. After this, he gave all the information he found to Marsha Smith, and apparently she drafted two documents that eventually ended up on the desk of President Carter. Now, after this, the CIA realized that Carter was not going to stop digging around, so they actually sent a lone MJ-12 briefing officer to the Oval Office to have a private one-on-one -on -one meeting with President Carter, where he apparently briefed him on UFOs, crash retrievals, and the ET presence on Earth. Now, proof of this briefing was actually contained in a leaked CIA document leaked by a former member of the Defense Intelligence Agency who anonymously called himself the Falcon. Right after this meeting, a presidential aide who was really close to Carter walked into the Oval Office and saw President Carter sitting at his desk sobbing with his head in his hands. From that moment on, Carter also seemed to change his entire stance on wanting to disclose all the UFO information, saying in an interview, maybe there are some UFO sightings that have national security implications and perhaps not everything can be released. Which brings us to the biggest question of all, why? Why do presidents who are clearly interested and seem to believe in UFOs stop talking about it altogether once they get in the White House? Is it because UFOs actually don't exist? Is it because we don't want other countries to know the technology we have access to? Or is there something much more sinister going on here? To truly understand the answer to these questions, we have to go back to 1947 when the CIA was first formed, just five months after an entire naval fleet was allegedly attacked by a flying saucer that could quote, fly from pole to pole with incredible speed. And I tell the entire story of what happened in this video right here. Go check it out.